like you may get a little bit more snow today, baby. Well, it looks like it's definitely up ahead of us, that's for sure. Wyoming, we're coming at you, buddy. Yeah, we're enjoying Wyoming. This is awesome. This views are great right out the windshield. And then I got Pearl driving over here. She's just loving it. The roads are nice. The weather's been fair. We've caught some rain and snow and wind. But all in all, it's been pretty good. As you know, we generally try to stay in Thousand Trails campgrounds. Just financially, it works out for us. But this year, we're trying to find boondocking spots. And we uh, signed up for Harvest Host. We signed up for Boondockers Welcome. And that Historic Trails West with the covered wagons and horses, that was a Harvest Host. That worked out well. We were happy with that. But the Boondockers Welcome, we have been less than optimal for us. The first one was a family farm. It worked out okay. It was a little uncomfortable, but the people that lived there, they were great and made us feel welcome. So that was kind of okay. But we stayed at one in Green River, Wyoming, right before the uh, Historic Trails West. Didn't work out so good. As you can see, it's pretty much an abandoned tile and construction kind of uh, business. And I talked to the owner just the day before we got there, and he said, yeah, pull right up, park in the parking lot, you'll be fine. And there'll be another RV there with you. There's that little white van you'll see here in a minute. So we parked right where we thought we should, and a couple hours later, the sheriff showed up. And he wanted us to move, and we told him we just talked to the owner. Uh, I called the owner. The owner come out, and uh, he told us to go on down this road and park in the back kind of find out the owner wasn't the owner anymore he just sold it two weeks ago but he said it's okay for us to park back here and I didn't want to go back there I was just concerned of nails and flats and maybe broken glass and stuff it just didn't look good but it was getting later in the evening almost dark so we did it started snowing which was kind of cool but then we left the next day and uh, I noticed our tire pressure was down I aired it up we drove on to Historic Trails West, and then we drove on to uh, Custer, but we lost about 10 pounds of air that day. We got down to like 32 pounds. We normally run about 40, and sure enough, we had a slow leak. We never got a flat, so we had to take it and get it repaired, and that's the first time we've had trouble with a, a tire in probably seven or eight years. Forest Service Road 254. And it turns out finding Going boondocking spots way. in the uh, National okay. Forest is not as easy as we thought for the, our big of an RV. You'll be glad you got it, I bet you. I guess. So we kind of put that uh, searching for boondocking spots on hold and went on over to uh, Custer State Park. And that's where we had all planned to meet up. Uh, Jeff and Lori made it over. They come up from Tennessee. Pat and Chris drove over from Cleveland, Ohio. They sold their RV. They've got a new one ordered, but right now they just drove their Jeep over and they're staying in a cabin nearby. And then Computer Joe, you've heard us talk about him quite a bit. He came up from Florida and lucky for me, my laptop is getting having some issues. And he just sat there and took it all apart right in the campground and told me the parts to order and we got them on the way. We smoked up some chicken drumsticks and some brats and yes, had a great little lunch and sat around the campfire and talked about old times. We hadn't seen these guys since we, it's been a couple of years. Our boondocking rally in 2020 is the last time we saw several of them and then Joe we saw in Florida in 2019 I think. And then we we made us some s'mores. We don't normally do that but it just seemed to be appropriate. Had us a bonfire and everybody got caught up. And then there at Custer, uh, we'd already been to Mount Rushmore, so we didn't. I didn't go. Pearl went with the Jeff and Lori up to Mount Rushmore, and we took this train ride, the 1880 train ride. It's a steam powered locomotive with five or six cars, and it's about an hour trip from Hill City up to I don't remember what the town we went to, and then back. And that was a lot of fun. We don't have any more challenges, Jeff, to, uh, to your vacation. Give me a smile, buddy. A and B on the people's <laughs> side, C and D on the rails.
You make a good hamburger. And we took the, there's a nature trail, nature trail there at Custer State Park. And they got buffalo and just all kind of deers and antelopes and stuff. That was pretty cool. And most of it we just kind of caught up, dumped our tank, got fresh water and got ready for our trip up to, you guessed it, Nomad View. And this is a place that just got to be seen to be believed. So more about that after we get our tanks dumped and get on the road. So it took us about 30 minutes to get our tanks emptied and get some fresh water and uh, get headed out to Nomad View. We're going to be there about two weeks boondocking and that's about our limit. And I think Jeff and Lori have said they've uh, boondocked for two weeks at a time before. But for both of us, it's still pretty new. And then Joe, the computer guy, is going to meet us there. And he's not boondocked hardly at all. He's He's got his RV set up for it, perfect. He's got 100 gallons of fresh and 1200 watts of solar and six uh, lithium batteries. I mean, he's set up, he just hadn't done it yet. So we're all gonna get two weeks of boondocking at Nomad View and just uh, see what we can do. We've got another state park or two to get to after Nomad View. And then we're gonna have to find some boondocking places out in the forest. So let's caravan on over to uh, Nomad View that's in the Badlands and in Buffalo Gap National Park, National Grasslands. So let's head that way. And we're off. Yes, we are. Get her done, Bobby. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been seeing this Nomad View Dispersed Camping Location in YouTube videos for the last four or five years. And I wondered where it was. I was really hoping someday I could get here and now we're here. This to me is a pretty amazing place. I like your view, baby. I like the view. How do you like it? I like it a lot. I'm glad you stopped just in time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you don't have five feet left. No, I got ten. Okay, ten. <laughs> I'm still glad you stopped. Pretty nice. Yeah, it is. Then That's here's our great. buddies, Jeff and Lori. Yes. Uh, everything's been great here. We got Thank the. Uh, we found a pretty good site to park in. Jeff and Lori and uh, Pearl and I fit right in there. We set up the barbecue, the weather was perfect, and we barbecued us some ribs. Uh, Pat and Chris joined us. They stayed just down the road here at, in those cabins I showed you. And they joined us, and then the next day they took off back to Cleveland, Ohio. So how far is it to home? Yeah. What is it, 1,100 miles? Yeah, 1,100, 1,150. Two days? probably do it two days I'm not uh, sure I had they made that 1200 mile trip in one day uh, like 20 hours I think and while I was doing a walk along the rim there was a couple that heard Pearl's voice and they said that's Pearl I can't believe it here at Nomad View in South Dakota a couple that watch our YouTube channel uh, Michael oh, and Stacy celebrities to us <laughs> what was your names now Michael and Stacy Greg all right We'll see you at the next exit, Michael and Stacy. 
they were parked just down the road from us and uh, come in we got to visit with them a few minutes and that very interesting couple it'd be nice to uh, run into them again and get to visit some more they were heading out the next morning so we didn't get to talk too much we had some bighorn sheep that were just right off the rim less than 100 feet 200 feet from us we saw them a couple of days in a row so everything is just awesome until it wasn't we've heard if you watch many videos it shows uh, nomad view it talks about the wind the wind can get horrendous and it did the first night we had thunderstorm yeah. we had winds sustained winds up around 60 miles an hour it was blowing jeff and Lori slide in and out and up and down and they can't bring their slide in without uh, they got a procedure to go through with their uh, levelers and with their jacks down and they just weren't comfortable bringing the slides in and doing all that uh, their coach developed a leak had a nice big puddle of something underneath it and uh, that's always disconcerting and uh, and our slide topper on our big slide was blown plumb out of the track uh, and it, that didn't happen till early in the morning when the storm or yeah we heard it it sounded like a, a crack of thunder and it was uh, the tube the roller tube and the slide popped out and landed on top of the roof and luckily it didn't hit the uh, solar panels but it did blow over and lap over the solar panels so we got found the part we got some parts ordered and we're going to put that back together here in a day or two uh, it's just been plum crazy it's wonderful it's beautiful but the weather is uh, plum local jeff and Lori have headed back to rapid city to get their coach into a shop and get their find out what their leak is and get that fixed uh, Computer Joe arrived a day or two later, and he spent a couple of days with us while Jeff and Lori were gone. And then now we've all moved down to a whole nother site so we can all fit in to a bigger area. And it's just as good, if not a better view. Hi. And so we're not gonna go into all of that in this video because it's just too much. So we'll have another, and plus we're still we're still here. We got a whole nother week of this, so I don't know what's going to happen over the next week. But we, uh, I got to admit, we do have some confusion on this boondocking and national forest and where we can camp, where we can't camp, how long we can camp. Uh, Joe found a uh, notice from the Berger Teton National Forest that uh, talks about five day restrictions. The most you can stay is five days, which. That don't interest me at all. Pearl and I like to get somewhere set up, get our outside kitchen set up and our clam tent and spend a couple of weeks. So we're doing some powwow and figuring out are we gonna split up and go different directions? Or are we gonna stay together and go the same way? Uh, you know, we're caravanning, we're caravanning and we're planning on doing this for a couple of months, but we may do some splitting up and going and doing different things and meeting back up in Washington or Oregon, or we may find to figure this out a little bit better and uh, stay together. But it's hard to, I think it's gonna be hard to find places for three big class A motorhomes uh, to boondock uh, without reservations or anything. So we're a little confused, we're figuring it out, we're still excited, we're still having fun, but there's more to come. But I can tell you this, it's all part of the adventure and we're all five loving it. So stay tuned. Check up with us in a week or two whenever we put out our next video. I got no idea what's going to happen next, but it is a ton of fun. So that about covers it for now. Bob and Pearl here from Nomad View, just outside of Wall, South Dakota. And this is definitely a bucket list item for us to check off the list. So we'll leave you with a little bit of drone footage here of the area. And until we see you next week, keep the wheels rolling, stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit, folks. Bye-bye.